This is Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we analyze the biggest and the best entertainment stories and, of course, have lifestyle conversations. My name is Elsie Godwin, and I've got my very interesting co anchors with me, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Oshanke. We're getting Good very morning, interesting today. I think mm. we're doing something right. How are you guys doing? Well, you right? Yeah. How are okay. you? I'm I'm good. Um, I'm better. <laughs> <laughs> We're trying to <laughs> absorb like some process, you know, process something. What's mm. going on. Yeah, <laughs> but we're good. We're good. So Nigerian singer Timmy Dakolo is wondering why people are acting surprised when NCDC puts out number of confirmed cases as people still go out every day. Mm. He's been on this for a long time, and I get why the lockdown for me only happened for like three days in nigeria hmm. i think after that even people, social distancing yeah i think after that people just kind of forgot about it it's very hard to me it's very hard to do what they're asking for without any support people need people's lives like i think it's not people just think that it's about food why don't you just stock up people were in the middle of important things like it's so interesting to see how like interconnected we are and that how like this lockdown can kind of mess that up like people were in the middle of things and um, renovations giving birth like there's so many things i'm telling you <laughs> how did it stop giving birth <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe they need to buy maybe food or something like there's a lot of reasons why they can't stay at home like there's so many reasons so you have to just understand that it's hard and the and one I that talks it all is they live a life where they have to make what they eat exactly so how do you tell them to I stay mean, home? the people who are making traffic, that are in traffic are not, those ones are in their cars. I don't know where they are going to, but I still feel like even no, they, too, know, they are driven by something. The Lagos State government is saying that we have gotten to the point where we would say we have community transfers. Of course. So definitely it is no longer those people in their cars. It's yeah. now a case of a crowded community having one person with the virus and then it becomes a pandemic in that situation yeah. so that is the new fear mm. I, I mean it's going to happen and i think it will still continue to happen until mm. the government actually aids um people people i in like the right the, way as well yeah i like the the mask thing i think that would really help um, a lot. There's been other countries that have come out to say that that was one of the major things. Too many actually coming out to say that that's one of the things that they did to really curb the virus, that everybody just wore face masks. And it's kind of ironic because I remember when this thing first came out, they were like, oh, we shouldn't buy face masks. Now I think about it, I'm thinking they only made that because they didn't want people to go and start buying all the face masks. And we won't have face masks for the medical people. Um, people. But it makes, it, it didn't make sense to me then. Remember I even started wearing a face mask like first week and then if I, even if I came to me, I was like, oh my gosh, you're not supposed to wear face Mask. You're supposed no, to wear face mask when you're coughing. Wrong. I wasn't. You were no, the I wasn't. green side like you were infected. Y no, the, the green, <laughs> the green okay, side so is supposed I to be think, outside. I think the, the no, whole... It is. If you have a flu or if you're coughing or if you're trying to warn somebody that, look, I, I have something that's maybe no, a fair. symptom. No, the green side is supposed to be outside. There's just one way of wearing Yeah, it. just one way. Don't just, mind you. Yeah. <laughs> but it didn't get your mask because we From things I've read online. But at the same time, um, it's difficult to do what they're asking. But life is more important than all of these things at the same well, time. Well, life wouldn't happen if other things don't happen. Yeah, I totally agree. But like yesterday, there was a gridlock on Todd Millen Bridge, and I was wondering. And um, I think that led to a lot of um, officers on the road yesterday because there were so much on the road yesterday. And I was wondering, like, why? Because obviously, they must have seen the video of the Todd Millen Bridge, and they're wondering where everyone is going to. But it's not easy to do what they're asking, especially but but like you rightly said, these people are in their cars. Now, we're talking about people that don't even have a, a, a means of livelihood this period. I heard a sad story this morning. I don't know how true it is, so don't quote me. But um, somebody in the, um, a colleague of ours told me that a pregnant woman died over the weekend because she was hungry. Wow. Yeah, she died of hunger. And I'm wondering, like... And the government sees this news and they're not doing anything about it. What happened to the money they said they're giving everybody? What happened to the food bank? What happened? Like, who has gotten anything? I don't know anyone personally that has gotten any relief from the government. And this is not how it is in other countries. So, Timmy also needs to push in as much as you want people to stay at home. You also need to push for things like this. Mm. That what is the government doing about people yeah. that are locked down this period? Because it's really sad. Yeah, I want to touch on what you said regarding wearing masks. I think it's now become important because most of the cases we have in this part of the world, or at least in Nigeria, if you're following their 
um, conversations, it's looking like they're all asymptomatic. So that means it's now extremely difficult for you to mm. know who has this virus and who does not have this virus. So if anybody's sneezing and you feel like, oh, this person is not sick or not coughing, the person might actually be a carrier mm. and sneezing or just touching surfaces and all that would spread the virus. So I think that is why the whole mask thing is now becoming very um, important to put in place. But I just hope that we come out of this. And I like that um, Timmy Dakolo is talking about this, but like you said, he should also lend um, voice to helping people that are in need because so many people are having it really hard this time mm. around. Yeah, at least the celebrities should use their voices wisely. Lots of them and it's, good, it's that. cool that you said that because I haven't actually seen Timmy, like I, it's cool people, but I haven't actually seen him. I think he's just in his own bubble. Yeah, yeah it's having, a lot of talking. But, it's okay. but I mean, we're all doing that as well. Look yeah. at me, I'm just talking. So. Okay. Um, moving on, an African who speaks perfect English, French and Portuguese but can't speak his native language is not polished. Rather, such a man is rubbished. Feeling superior because of a foreign language is like feeling superior because of a borrowed clothes. And this is coming from lawyer, author, social commentator, Reno Omokri. Is the table shaking? Is it? The table is not shaking. It's not shaking. Yeah, it's not shaking. Okay. Can, we, can we go on? Do you think it's shaking? Uh, I don't know. Is it? If I, I mean, uh, let me give you one comment before you go. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody said, I can speak. God, what's this person's language? Okay, Teeve. Mm. I can speak Teeve. I can even rap in Teeve. But I'm laughing at myself as uh, that's not going to give me a U United Nations job. Mm. So I don't know. Mm. I, I understand when people are trying to advocate for um, Native tongue. speaking our mother tongue and also that would help to ensure that it doesn't go extinct like you have people who right. always carry that on however i do not appreciate it when we you come try down to hard rubbish it. on people that cannot because sometimes it's not entirely their fault if you can speak portuguese and french and what other one did he mention what it's about it takes France effort Portugal? and it means that you some for some they went to school for it right but some they actually lived in a, an it's environment the where they needed it, they were hearing it every day they needed to speak it to survive but here there are families um, that don't speak Igbo or Yoruba or they just speak English yeah. or they speak Pidgin and they just f follow that because it's kind of the easiest way for them to communicate yeah. instead of trying to it's tell really you like inter you um, cultural or marriage and yeah. all that so you you will not necessarily blame them and now say it is rubbish the good thing is they can speak three languages it mm. is something so I've met people who can also speak Yoruba Igbo Aosa mm -hmm. and there are people that are actually gifted in this language and they call them polyglots right mm -hmm. and they can they can speak a lot they, mm. w they just need to be in an environment for say two weeks and mm. they speak more than people who have been there for a long yeah. time it's also a talent so i don't appreciate him coming out to say that is rubbish or that would now take away everything um you are as a human being so what if all you can speak is your mother tongue and english does that now make you superior to, to those who can who speak learned, all yeah. that and then okay, so and this is, sorry go on. this is my thoughts I, I mean i it, it's his statement is is competing between reality and ideology mm -hmm. i think mm. i, I I, I, as an ideology, I would rather that we are more Afrocentric as a people and we should be learning our languages and we should pride ourselves more in doing that. And in an ideal world, um, based on ideologies as well, it should be that if I learn more language, I should have the same opportunities like I would have if I was learning a foreign language. That's ideology aside and, you know. But reality mm -hmm. is that if you speak foreign languages, you get not even just foreign languages, languages that are more um, accessible, accessible to a lot of people. And we have to look at our history and context where language has traveled. So even Portuguese is not necessarily just a foreign man's language because it's mm. Africans who speak that. Mm. Same thing with French and same thing with uh, there's another language. Or oh, well, even Swahili, for example. Do you say Swahili is African because it's started from Africa, but it's transferred to other places South and things Africa like that. Kenya. Then you also have um, um, languages that have e evolved over time and become something else, like Yorubas. Uh, um, Yoruba has kind of like um, um, been modified in Brazil and Jamaica and like little places like that that they'll tell you that they speak some type of Yoruba. Mm. So it's it, um, reality in speaking or in, rea in, in a realistic context, his statement in itself is rubbish because <laughs> today you have languages that are diverse and everything. So I feel like it's up to you. If you can, if you are good with languages, I would qu I would want you to question why you don't speak an African language or why you don't learn that because like you mentioned, which is a big, big um 
um, like such a big important factor for people to understand is that you have to be able to pass that down so that we're not even um, uh, encouraging um, colonization without even knowing it because you have to be able to um, specifically transfer your language. And I think that's happened with me. I've been colonized to a point where I can't even like, I don't think I'll be able to pass any language to my family. So I have to be really... <laughs> you pass English. I have to be really, exactly. I have to be really intentional. And that's how you strengthen the English um um, colony mm. and that's why we need to do the same thing for Yorubas and all that stuff so I understand where he's coming from but that that you can't learn that it's already like first of all look at your history like look at look at the maps look at where people who speak Portuguese and everything so it's mm. very hard to start to claim that as well but I know that if you're putting it in Nigerian context there is a lot of us especially in my generation there's also the job opportunity contest as well. exactly I was going but to I was say, say even in my generation there's a lot of people who don't speak the language anymore it's too common where and they're not even they're not like everyone lived, lived abroad even born and raised Nigerians who just don't know how to speak their language. It's it's very it's not almost rare when I see my age mates like speaking their language fluently. It's like, oh, how did you do that? Or, or like, whatever. oh, that's so hard. I speak to you very sis, you're very so cool. If you're <laughs> right, terrible, don't even start. No, no, eh, you're right, you're you're right, right, you're right, right, you're 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 should I call it mental health now or mindset thing into it? So when my mom was alive, um, we conversed in Igbo, right? And it became the family thing. So if I'm in that environment, I'm very comfortable speaking speak Igbo, Igbo and nobody's telling me, oh, you didn't pronounce this right. This mm. is how it was supposed to be. Because there was this thing of when we travel home and you speak and they tell you, oh, what you're speaking is Lagos Igbo mm. or you're not speaking the right thing. So when she passed on, God rest her soul, I, I have not gotten comfortable with speaking Igbo to with anybody because one, I don't want to be judged, two, it was, I felt it was just our thing. So because of that, I don't have that fluency mm. anymore and mm. you would hardly catch me speaking Igbo except I'm just doing the whole remark and all that. But mm. do I understand when people speak? Yes, I do. So there are people who have that emotional attachment to it as language. well and if they don't tell you how it is for them, you will understand it. So if you speak Igbo to me, I would understand but I have to get to a certain level of comfort with you to be able to speak Igbo mm. and trust that you're not going to judge my pronunciation. So it's, I, I think it's different for so many people and coming out to just say it is rubbish because you can't speak your mother tongue yeah. is just ridiculous. And I think if we're a place like Nigeria, I think language is also another means of assimilation where if you live in Lagos, like it's just, it makes more sense to be able to learn Yoruba, even just to survive to a large extent. Um, you get into bigger circles or network easier if you speak Yoruba. And I, th I think I've talked about this before with the music when some guy was saying that yeah. singing Yoruba mm -hmm. music makes more money and people were disagreeing but I noticed that from the first minute I got here that Yoruba just seems to be the more um, um, higher currency in terms of like yeah. um, languages and stuff like that so for some people who learn all these foreign languages it also has to assimilate to those places I, I think for me my accent is one of uh, is a detriment of that like I've been in a, a lot of places where I had to adjust my pronunciations and then I had to assimilate as well into having that accent so does the accent that mean uh, more so, so there's levels to you can rip apart oh, while watching comment. you speak I'm just I remembering think... your proverb from yesterday but we need to go on a break okay. <laughs> I didn't even get to say a word yes, on this story you, you wow start it and you refuse. <laughs> no. anyway it's time for a quick break when we come back maybe if we will touch more on this Welcome to Tea Time on Plus TV Africa, where we bring you the biggest entertainment stories and, of course, analyze them for you. You can have both parents and still end up as a useless child. I they see them every day. <laughs> Most times, I worry more about where I'm coming from mm -hmm. and where I am now, wow. and that determines my next step. Why are you sounding like Alibaba? Alibaba. Oh, yeah. and plus TV Africa, we're feeling good. No time to die, everybody feeling all right. Music and people are still by. Some say they look myself minimal. Are you? Mm. Mm. Music is for mature minded people. I got DM sometimes from Malawi, like, what? <laughs> <laughs> sleeping early. Sleeping early. <laughs> Oh, 
Welcome back. This is Tilti Time on Plus TV Africa. Piers Morgan apologizes for underestimating Lady Gaga after she raised $127 million for World Health Organization. He initially mocked the singer over her upcoming appearance at a WHO press conference on the COVID-19 pandemic when it was announced earlier this month that Lady Gaga would attend a WHO press conference as a special guest. Morgan questioned the decision in a tweet. He said, why um, has she found a cure? Otherwise, we don't need a bloody singer there. Piers Morgan apologized via Twitter saying, I owe you an apology at Lady Gaga. Um, this was a great initiative that raised the fortune, entertained people, and will help save lives. It was also a perfect illustration of a major star using their profile properly in this crisis. Congrats and sorry for originally questioning it. End of quote. I think um, the story in particular um, can be brought back home in the sense that a lot of celebrities are doing more of the complaining out here about the COVID-19, about how they're also in isolation, about how the lockdown is affecting them. But what can you do with your level of influence? I don't see anyone doing that so far. Apart from the NCDC, I've heard that a few of Banky them have jumped on. No, uh, let's forget the There's food Banky, now. There is, um, no, let's even forget name? the food. Now, $128 million is a lot of money. And this is a clear case of judging a book by its cover. Now, the, Piers Morgan just saw a Lady Gaga. Oh, she's crazy. She wore um, the mate's outfit to the, um, what's it called, VMAs. And, you know, no, I don't just think that's all he saw. No, no, what, I'm what saying, no, I'm saying. What he basically saw was just a singer. He didn't see beyond that. No. Definitely, but statement. maybe, maybe if it was, um, what singer can I use I like now? I thought if it was Jay Z that was there, he wouldn't have said that. G yeah, thank okay. you. Yeah, mm -hmm. it, I, I was looking for a perfect person. Jay I think or Beyonce maybe wouldn't have said that. Uh, but I think it was a woman thing. Oh uh, mm. no, come on! I think so. I don't I think, think so. so. I don't think it was a woman thing. I just think it was a Lady Gaga like. Why? Oh. What's the difference between Lady Gaga and Beyonce? Lady Gaga is a crazy one. Everybody sees Lady Gaga but as a Gaga crazy one. Which has been maybe like ten years ago. Like, um, there's been a that... difference. Um, there's been a journey when it comes with to Lady Gaga, yeah. and um, there's this movie she did with um, Stars, Stars. Bradley Cooper. Yes, Bradley uh, Cooper. If you a from that born. movie, mm -hmm. there has been a level yeah, of she was maturity. Crazy, like, ages ago. It's like yeah, like, yeah, yeah. So I think in this level now, it's. I mean, in this story, it's about what the outside look and he wasn't thinking about the impact that a lady gaga or what she can actually bring to the table now look at the amazing initiative she did the one voice um what's it called again what's the name of the concert one world concert one world concert and on all that together and and she brought 128 million dollars man that's really amazing so i think a lot of nigerian singers should also take a cue and not just be putting girls on your instagram live to go on cloud and doing with she understand like we can do that so smile feels like you're enjoying it but it's okay <laughs> i don't even watch it i get okay. disgusted do you understand honestly i do get disgusted i'm i'm mm. actually unhappy with myself because i missed babyface and teddy riley's session yesterday <laughs> but that aside i want to say that um ps morgan has done the right thing mm, by he's, apologizing yeah yeah, yeah. we don't have a lot of people who will openly come out to apologize when they do something wrong mm. they will look at it actually in this part of the world they will look at it and say that another thing will happen people will move on so it's not a big deal also so I don't know if this pandemic has done something to him, but he's been on points um, for the past few days. Even some people tweeted at him to say, ah, "Uncle, what's going on? Is this touching you in a different light?" But even you know, on very his vocal opinion, and controversial yeah, well. even on his opinion um, with um, Trump's activities and mm. what he's doing, he says he feels like Trump is um, more focused on the election than on the pandemic. Mm. I mean, he had a very interesting angle to the conversation, and every conversation he's been having in in recent times. So. I think that he's becoming a better man. I mm. think I think that, like you we don't said, think so. you know, we said that this pandemic uh, would change a lot of people would and change make the world. people so the world actually. So I'm hoping that this would continue. It doesn't mean that there won't be times when you see things that doesn't rest well with the intellectually elite mm. people. I mean, we had Akan Nani on this table to roast even after he was the front voice when it happened, um, <laughs> um, when the Busola Dakolo case happened, but he goofed this time around so i don't think anybody is particularly perfect when it comes to intellect um we just have to create room for uh, yeah, and i like the fact that you sorry i like the fact that you touched on in um apologizing because um I think that's also a lesson. There are a lot of lessons in the story because that's a lot of lesson that people need to take away. It's okay to be wrong sometimes. All you have to do is just apologize. Maybe when he apologizes to Megan and her, he's thinking, mm. then I'll be like, okay, 
he is a changed man. Except you want Pierce to go back to, because it's not just my gonna have. Except you want me to go back to everybody he's ever heard mm. to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's not gonna happen. So let's just take him And then him there, for there, who there was actually now. a progression in this story, you understand? It's apologizing about if something was wrong about. Now, he may have been wrong in the other one, but he didn't see the change, like the drastic change of no, the he effect didn't, well, nah, nah, or nah, the nah, effect nah, nah, nah. of what he was very, talking no, about. Those are very different things because here he's saying that no, he's it's believing... No, saw an immediate effect. Do you understand? Yeah, there are two different have, things. It, no, yeah, exactly. Whatever. It doesn't mean... This really doesn't matter. I, I hope he's changing if he, if he wants to. <laughs> you just hope he's changing. <laughs> no, that's, my, that's not my problem. My, my, my focus more is with the celebrities. I've talked a lot about how they need to do more. more um, and that, you know, this idea of like wearing this together and you just sing your song in front of the camera and give me this weird vibe. I've been, it's, been really, it's been really off for me. Like, um, like let me give you a, a sample of the word vibe. Be banky! Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, we need to move on to the okay. next story. So, right. make okay. your point. You were saying uh, something. Okay, um, well, I just felt like this is the first time they've done it right, using their privilege, not to say that they're, they are not feeling the pandemic, but they've acknowledged, first of all, that their case is different and you do have an upper hand and you do have the privilege and they've used that to do something really good. Yeah. So that's what I want to see. I don't want Ellen in her mansion telling me oh. she feels Leave like she's Ellen alone. Alone. You know, she's goodness. still said this way. Ah. She's so an athlete okay. in his outfit. So, like, look at I his face. We are not in this together. There are levels to this. <laughs> um, Nollywood actress um, says not all single moms lived a reckless life most were betrayed by men and circumstances a lot of them are actually superheroes um stay home and stay safe and her name is bimbo thomas i totally agree with her because it's such um, an old conversation a, yeah, a, yeah. But the stigma old. is still there so yeah. i think we need to refresh the minds of a yeah. lot of people and a lot of people just believe that okay the fact that you're a single mom maybe you had your child when you were a lot younger or maybe you were um promiscuous or you had a bad character that was why character. the man did not marry they, they, you but they don't think about the fact that some people need to leave certain relationships that are toxic or very abusive so what happens to a woman that is, that is in an abusive relationship and she has a child with a man so she's supposed to stay there because she doesn't want to be a single mom I, 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 I think that there's a problem with this for both genders actually for me this uh, pity party thing that they put for single parents is uh, for single women single parents that are females um, is wrong because first of all there's a lot of single dads that mm. are struggling mm. having a hard time they were the ones in the abusive relationship and they're left with their children to take care of and then there's women who are single parents that don't have an issue they have the money to take care of their 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 children they have a new fiance that's a boyfriend or someone that's supporting like people have it really easy i i, I think it's they, different for everyone yeah and i think that when we start to gender rise is one place where i feel like there's no space for gender in the at all like the idea that one parent is taking care of a child is 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 um unfortunate in all with all sexes but guess because, what because mm? if you see a single mother you probably they are the ones who go through the um what's it called now stigmatization the stigmatization yeah and that's what i'm if trying to if you see a single father you're like oh so cute yeah. oh you even Jim's hear job well done yeah, yeah. Jim's yeah. Jim's really tried like, so cute so wow. you see, you see like, on the women because they like, are the yeah. ones facing the problem that's so i don't think we should even make it a sex thing because if you look at the stigmatization now you see that the the men have it a whole lot easier than the and women and that's why we re well, so we're saying the same thing that's why we need to remove that gender um, um idea from from parenting and, and and focus on on the child really um it's it really is about if that person can provide enough um parenting whatever the things that the child needs to be, be to be become a, be a better person i would say however that um for for females that are um single parents in this context there's something about the fact that women are just not enough on their own mm. even if they didn't have a child they will still be incomplete and that's why i think people need to start thinking about that when they're receiving those stigmas that it yeah. isn't just about your single parenting it's about being a woman and that's why we have to get back yeah. to the roots and trying to find equality on those okay on those that's sexes. how we wrap up we need to go but i like the angle you brought to the table because it reminds me of the particular brand that had to change the slogan on their pack that had more money to parents and that right. was really heartwarming so yes. I hope we'll talk more on this at the next episode. But thank you for watching. You can catch this conversation on YouTube. It's our YouTube channel at Plus TV Africa. Also join the conversation by using the hashtag Tea Time or Twitter tells at Plus TV Africa. Watch Tea Time on RT TV and the London on Ben Television. My thank you as always to go to my co-anchors, Ife Omai and Ife Oluwa Shoke and the entire production team. Thank you for watching Plus TV Africa's Tea Time. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay safe.